Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Sandra Berry and I'm here in Village Hall today in my office with our State Rep Kelly Burke. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, thanks for coming. I'm very excited to have you here. I want to let residents know a little bit about you and about what's going on and exactly what do you do in Springfield to help Oaklawn. So you're in the hot seat this morning. Uh, first I just want to know what part of Oaklawn you represent because you're not the entire part of Oaklawn, correct? correct? So, the, so the district itself runs from um, Chicago from 83rd and Ashland all the way west to Palis Park to um, 131st and Wilcook Road. So um, the Oak Lawn part that's in there is essentially um, all of Oak Lawn that's south of Southwest Highway um, it, up to 111th Street. Okay. So it, it jogs in and out, but those are the rough boundaries. The majority of Oak Lawn. Yeah, the majority of yeah. Oak Lawn. So chances are if you're an Oak Lawn resident, you're a representative. Um, who is the other representative for the other parts? So the other parts of Oak Lawn is Representative um, Mary Flowers on mm -hmm. the north end, and then um, Representative Fran Hurley has that uh, a little, little corner. part of Oak Lawn that's, that's south of 115th. Yeah. And then the senators um, on the north end would be Senator Jackie Collins, and then Senator Bill Cunningham has the rest. Now, how long have you been our state rep? Uh, four years. So okay. I just, what, we had our inauguration or swearing in in Springfield last week, um, and that was for the third term. That's really exciting. So your terms are two years. Two years, yeah. Every so two you're years. always campaigning then. I, yeah. I, I was very grateful my term was four years. <laughs> yeah. It, because you get to sit back and say, okay, I'm not just going to be in constant campaign mode, even though you always are, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, one of just, it comes with the job. And um, I, I just like to think about it as it, it keeps you in touch with people because you're out there every two years um, asking for their support. So it really, I think, helps keep you in tune with what's going on and really, you know, make sure that you get out there and and do a lot of interaction with uh, the residents. So yeah, it is the, it's two years and you know that's good. Just, we go along with it. Now, what did you do before you were a representative? So um, I'm an attorney by profession. I um, worked at a couple of different law firms for about 14 years, and then um, I went. I, I, I quit practicing law and went to work in fundraising for St. Xavier University. So I worked there for five years um, and then uh, went to the General Assembly. Wow. Well, wow. was it hard to make the transition? Um, it was different, e and each job was different. Um, I mean, fundraising was completely different from practicing law, but I used a lot yeah. of the skills that I had acquired in practicing law um, in communication and persuasion and analysis, and it and, and that helped in the fundraising aspect. And then a lot of things I learned in the fundraising aspect, um, you know, also carried over into um, into the political aspect, and obviously a lot of the legal skills. Um, have, have come in handy as well. Yeah, well, I, I, I want to say I can see that in how you work because you, you are not just passive sitting there for us to go to you. You actually reach out to us often and tell us what's going on, give us heads up about initiatives that may be of benefit. Right. So you're, you're, you're um, working your base as almost right. as a prospector. I never thought <laughs> of it like a sales in sales terms, but uh, yeah, I, I feel um, I felt immediately a good strong connection always with you as a resident so um, well I've got seven I, I represent not only parts of the city of Chicago but also seven southwest suburbs either all or in part and um, there's a lot of similarities with those communities but a lot of differences too so I feel it's really helpful for me to to go find out what's going on go find out what the problems are mm -hmm. what the issues are um, instead of waiting for you know somebody to to, yeah. to bring it to me and um, it's it's been great for you know they're great communities to work for all of them and um, you have a family also I have a family I have three teenage children um, <laughs> a college student and two high school students um, so that's interesting sometimes and uh, also a husband so how do you split your time between here and Springfield well Springfield um, w the we're in session during a certain period of time, and generally that's from mid-January till the end of May. And um, it, it progresses because um, the biggest thing we do is try and pass, or we have to pass a budget by May 31st. Mm -hmm. So um, we, in, in addition to all the other legislation, but um, there are various deadlines along the way. So as you come uh, and approach different deadlines, the workload gets 
heavier. So um, next week we'll be in Springfield for two days. By the time May comes around, we might be there for yeah. six or seven days in a row. So yeah. um, it just depends. But once May 31st is done, um, you're it's only the occasional um, trip back to Springfield for okay. something. And then there's two weeks in the fall where you're in Springfield for the veto session. Okay. Um, so you, you you work around it. My family's been really flexible. They've been fantastic. And It's got to be hard for the kids, too, because if you're busy in Springfield working for us, you're missing their band recitals, their sporting right. events. Sometimes, um, and, yeah, and um, you also get the call <laughs> where they'll call and ask you, did you see my English book? And you said, well, I haven't <laughs> been home for two days. I don't know where your English book is. Um, so they're they're always still relying on mom, which is great. It's a good mm -hmm. feeling. But my husband's been fantastic, and um, you do get enough flexibility when you're not in Springfield, where you can, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. you can work around the kids' schedule a little bit. So you could still have a life. Yeah, it's good. a challenge, but it's it's worked. Yeah. yeah, very good, very good. And you are on several committees down in Springfield. I'm on several committees. We we just started a new um, session, a new. Ge each general assembly is two years long, so it's divided into two, you know, two sessions. So everything um, reorganizes each uh, general assembly. So we're in the process of reorganizing. So I don't know that all the committees I was on uh, last term mm -hmm. are going to be the exact same, but um, I, I think it should be fairly, um, fairly standard. So I'm on um, the agriculture committee, which is absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. because. There, other than the um, Chicago Agricultural High School, there's not a lot of farming in our area. And so I've been able to learn a lot about um, what drives the rest of the state south of uh, I-80. And um, <laughs> learn, because you do end up voting on a lot of those issues, and uh, the Agriculture Committee has been a great education for me. But I'm also, last year, was on two budget committees, mm -hmm. um, as well as a labor committee. Um, what do the licenses. committees do? Like so, they're the gatekeepers for the legislation. So, um, mm -hmm. if you were to, if you, the, if if you were to remember that um, that uh, Schoolhouse Rock video, mm -hmm. how a bill becomes a law. Well, there's steps along the way, and um, part of one of the steps is having to go through a committee before it gets to the floor. And the committees are divided by subject matter. So, um, for example, I'm on the health care license. Yes, and committee, I cut you off, and I'm sorry. Which is yeah. because of the two hospitals in the district, Little Company of Mary and Christ, there's a lot of um, medical um, issues, you know, here. So I thought it'd be good to be on health care licenses. So if there's a committee, if there's a bill, let's say, um, one that came up last year was mm -hmm. about dentists giving immunizations. Mm -hmm. Should that be something that they're allowed to do? Well, it has to go through the committee first. And the committee, people on the committee have generally be, been on there a while and have developed um, uh, an interest and knowledge of, of mm -hmm. those issues. And so they make the, um, they hear all the testimony and then make the decision whether the bill is a good bill or one that mm -hmm. you know isn't something that the committee thinks should should be voted on by the entire um, okay. house and then if, if if a bill manages to pass the house let's say it has to go through the exact same procedure um, with the committees and um, being voted on on the floor in the Senate Wow so it's a process that's pretty cool pretty yeah. cool very it's good. interesting yeah yeah and uh, so did the dentists get to do immunizations they came up with a um, it, it was it was a, a pretty fought out battle because obviously each um, um, you know different groups want mm -hmm. to sort of hold on to what um, they do. I know probably as an optometrist, you've witnessed some of very this before. Very much so. Very much um, so. And I, I we they came up with a compromise that I can't recall the okay, exact that's details. Okay, that's all right. But, that's all um, right. There so, was some flexibility given. So last week was pretty exciting in Springfield. We yes, have a new governor. Yes, we have a new governor. And uh, I know residents are probably very interested in how it will change the dynamic. And I understand you probably have no idea yet how, because everything right. is still being organized. Uh, right. do you, do you, anything you want to say so about I, that? I, yeah. I, so I've been in the legislature four years, and during that time, um, we've had a Democratic governor, and, and I'm um, a Democrat, and um, the Democrats are the majority in both the House and the uh, Senate. So I've never lived through, you know, having a, um, a mm -hmm. someone of the opposite party, and. Um, We'll see. I, I, everyone's pledging to be productive, and I will give um, kudos to Governor Rahner. He mm -hmm. has made 
um, efforts to talk to almost every member of the General Assembly on a one-on-one -on -one basis and find out what their interests are. And that's great. Um, it, it is. It, it, it was because there's a lot of you. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of people, yeah. and um, and he has made really a, an effort and has made a pledge to be. Um, to work on a bipartisan basis, which A, I think is practical, and B, is something that I think um, the public wants to see. Yeah. And so um, there will always be issues that um, that people differ on, especially mm -hmm. on a party basis. But the majority of things, I mean, the overwhelming majority of things, we can work on in a bipartisan basis. So at this point, I'm hopeful. We yeah. all are. We yeah, all are. Exactly. And, and, you know, we all give support to whoever's in office representing us. It's just a tough job. And I don't envy the, the issues you guys have to deal with, but I thank you for taking it on. Oh. I'm going to go from Springfield now back, back in the area mm -hmm. here and talk about some projects maybe that are going on in Oak Lawn that you've helped with. Can you uh, yeah. talk about, let's talk road projects. So we've had a couple road projects. Yeah. Um, that uh, one's complete and one I think is probably still underway. So yeah. um, Cicero Avenue in Southwest yes, Highway yes. Um, needed some improvements. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of a complicated intersection with the railroad trains running through Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And it's, it's also a wide intersection. But um, the Illinois Department of Transportation um, and the county, I believe, were able to put together the funding. We were able to get that yeah. going. Um, and, and it was kind of fast-tracked a little. Yes. And I want to thank you for, for always stepping in with that. There was oh. that very unfortunate yes, accident there a few years ago. And uh, that really brought to light, hey, there are some real problems with this intersection. And I want to thank you for working so closely with all the agencies to, to yeah. fast-track it. it. Believe it or not, it's fast-tracked. Right. I, right. A couple years. <laughs> in, in government world, it's fast track. Um, and the other one is um, Central Avenue and Southwest Highway near um, St. Gerald School. And really, um, that was a, a collaborative um, a collaborative project. And um, Cook County Commissioner John Daly really picked up Great the ball. Man. Great man. And, um, and worked real hard to get the county to do the majority of um, funding yeah. for that. And I, that's complete. That is pretty much done. I think they're going to do some like cosmetic things uh, yeah. once the weather breaks. I think maybe striping and that type of thing. Yeah. But but the majority of the hardscaping is done. Like landscaping, I think will still need to be done. But that one is is so the word I'm going to use is dreamy. When you are right. you know there and you see someone turning left and they're not just snagging the whole system right. and right. and the safety for the school kids there. And thank you for coming out to the oh, ribbon no, cutting on that. Or, uh, that was I guess that was the. The shovel. The shovel. Uh, we got the shovel. To, to shovel. Not, the not ribbon. Shovel. Yeah. And then a third one that has not um, started, but um, is something that we've been, the village and myself have been pushing for, is um, the repaving of Cicero Avenue from 87th Street to 95th. It's in the Department of Transportation's um, cycle. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter how, how fast those projects move for the cycles. How how yeah. much money they have to do I, it. I really appreciate that when I know residents do too because the potholes right. in that stretch. And the businesses and just, are yeah, uh, you know, really a, are like, <laughs> yeah, now now this winter, thank God, has been good. Right. But last winter, um, it, it, I couldn't believe how that street had deteriorated. Oh, so, yeah, it was so, terrible. So thank you very much. And then, uh, you know, <clears throat> you, you've secured funding for other kind of projects throughout the community you've, you've assisted right. with, like our so park district. Do you the want to park talk district about that? just um, received a four hundred thousand dollar grant through. Um, it's called the OSLED program. It's uh, for park districts to um, build facilities and um, get open land, and it's funded through a uh, um, the real estate when you buy or sell mm -hmm. a property. There's some um, there's a transfer fee, and part of that goes to park districts to you know to get these projects going. So Oakland Park District. Um, will get, I, I, yeah. I don't know their time frame, but they'll get yeah. started on that pretty no, soon. No, that's for their ball fields out there. Do you remember yes. what they're doing? It, uh, I think, it's Centennial, I believe. Yeah, right? I think they the ball fields kind of overlap, mm -hmm. and it's going to make it so they don't right. cross. Right, it'll yeah. be safer and, yeah. and just make, them mo make those uh, spaces more usable. Yeah. Because yeah. imagine two games going on at once oh, and the yeah. balls are going all over. And then the Children's Museum. So the Children's Museum, we were able to um, uh, get a $50,000 grant That's for wonderful. them for some of their um, exhibit 
and uh, capital mm -hmm. needs. And then um, also Park Lawn mm -hmm. um, is another organization, fantastic organization based in Oakland. And uh, we were able to get a $50,000 grant uh, for them. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been able to help Moraine Valley Community College with um, a student success center. So um, what, what is that? So they have a lot of students who, mm -hmm. um, you know, their families have not had a history of going to college mm -hmm. or they're, um, you know, maybe they struggled a little bit in high school or they're coming back mm -hmm. um, to school after a long absence of right. being out of there. And sometimes students like that, they need a little more support right. because, right. Uh, you know, there That's are a lot great. of obstacles that go in their way. So there's a lot of supports. Um, Tutoring, kind of mentoring, really, to it, and the idea is to keep these um, students on track wow. and make sure you know that they they're able to stay in school, that they're able um, you know not to be derailed by minor things. So um, it's 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 a great program. They do a lot of great things out at Marine Valley. So happy to help and then them. And even like a local agency like Courage Program benefits. Yeah, uh, so from, um, from things you do, you're able to. AT and T has. Um, a community-based award program um, called Investing in Illinois and um, I nominated the Courage program um, for their award so they received that right before the uh, right before Christmas yes uh -huh. it was a two thousand dollar award and it you know if you've ever uh, had any involvement with that program you know it goes right to those moms and kids and those families and it's it's a fantastic uh, uh, program I was really happy happy to do it so I'm gonna give you my wish list now Okay. <laughs> and I, I know you've heard it before. You know, we're, we're working on our senior center. Yes. Um, it's right now going through the leadership of the VFW to see if the organization itself wants to, um, what we're looking to do is kind of have shared use of the VFW building for our senior center during the day, and the VFW uses it evenings and weekends. So okay. kind of shared resources in the center of town. Each would have their own identity still and their own entrance, but a separate, but it, it's a major change for the VFW. Right. So, so they're going through um, right now internally, and then it has to go to Springfield uh, at, for approval. And then if that is approved at Kansas City, the national has to approve it oh so boy. on that end and on the village end we're working obviously to just make it work and and get the support and of course the money to right. do it so you know I, I I'm gonna just ask any help anything you see and I, I know there's so limited uh, resources out there but uh, the other projects we're working on of course is flood control and I've been right. to ear uh, years we've talked a know. lot about 103rd Street yeah, yeah yeah and and this is really exciting things that we can maybe uh, you know uh, improve people's lives quite a bit with. Um, so Especially as we get those, it seems like the storms um, the past couple years have been, we've just had some major storms and uh, yeah. we're not equipped we, to handle that. We get the hundred year yeah. floods every, every, six, year, every right? six months it seems, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and, and, and Melvina Ditch I know is being reworked on, uh, that's with MWRD, and, but uh, we're looking at 103rd Street and then flooding around 111th, we're looking to get the bike trail mm -hmm. to go um, all the way then to the larger bike trail um, right. So we're looking, you know, for a lot of little projects, okay. but a lot of focus around 111th and Cicero um, and our flood control and what else? I think that would be my wish list for. Okay. But uh, we'll, we'll anyway. put it on the list. So you're, uh, when you're not in Springfield, you're very involved in Oakland. Mm -hmm. There isn't, I think, an event I go to that I don't see you at, and you're, you know, and you, you also go to the schools a little bit, too. Can you right. tell me what schools you've been to? So um, what I do is um, I'll go to the junior high. So when um, kids, when Illinois uh, students are in seventh grade, um, they study the Illinois Constitution, and they learn all about um, our Constitution, mm -hmm. the makeup of um, government, the structure, how things work, and many schools also take a trip to Springfield. Mm -hmm. So that's always fun if they take a trip on a day when we're in Springfield that's and wonderful. then we can give them a little tour and, and meet the kids personally. But what I've tried to do is go out um, to as many of the middle schools and junior high, high classrooms as I can and we work through um, a, a mock um, bill. So we have we mm -hmm. kind of clue the kids, you know, mm -hmm. go, go over the whole process. And then we break the kids up into groups and we ask them to come up with an idea for a law. And then the kids 
sort of present their laws, and then we pick one of those ideas. How are their laws? What what kind well, of laws? Well, it's funny. You, the, the, <laughs> each time there's something different, but a common theme. This is going to be the fifth year I'm doing this. So I would say um, a lot of the things we hear about are um, better food in the cafeteria. <laughs> um, a lot about curfew, being able to stay uh -huh, out later, uh -huh. and um, then kids always want to drive at a younger age, and um, that's th those are the ones we see all uh -huh. the time. And so what we try to do is break down how something would be, um, like the driving would mm -hmm. be something you would deal with on a state level, but mm -hmm. you could petition your school board that's about great. the um, about the uh, the food, and you could go to the village and talk to them about adjusting the curfew. So to show them that there's different, the different layers of government handle different uh, problems. Yeah. But it's always fascinating because the kids get into it and they have a great time and they come up with arguments in support of whatever the bill is or uh -huh. in opposition to. So one of the ones we do as a default is to have a um, year-round school year. <laughs> and they are uniformly against a year-round <laughs> school year. Um, but I've gone to um, Oaklawn, mm -hmm. Hometown Middle School, Simmons, mm -hmm. St. Germain, and St. Linus. And in fact, I think I'm going to be at um, Simmons next Very week. Very good. Yeah, it's a great um, program. And if any teachers are watching, can they invite you to oh, come absolutely. and talk to the... Absolutely. We've, we've already sent an email out um, to the junior high teachers in the district, letting them know we're available. But if there's one who didn't get the email and is watching, we would love to come to your school. So just give a call over to well, my office. What a, what a great experience for the kids to learn in a It's great for way. me. I, I really yeah. enjoy it. There's, uh, they, they have some good ideas. And they're, in, they're, they're interested. They, they know, mm -hmm. um, you know what some of the big issues were. When we were debating um, and, and working on a, a concealed carry law, um, the kids really were fairly informed about it. It's kind of interesting. It's nice That's to good. see. That's good. You have other events coming up. We have other events. We are, um, for the second year, running a book drive of new and gently used board books for three um, birth to three uh, wow. education programs that are in the district. One is the Courage program. Um, another is uh, run through Richards High School. Um, and the third is through St. Xavier University. And um, all these programs um, really push literacy mm -hmm. and having parents get involved with reading to their children as early as, it, it's never too early to right. read to your child. And, and that's going to pay off dividends down the road. Um, so board books, gently used, you know, nothing that's uh, been too, too, too uh -huh. loved too much. but. Um, we can collect those at my office, 5144 West 95th Street. Um, if for some reason um, you come in, the office is closed, we're going to have a tote in the back uh, oh, nice. parking lot, and they can just put the books in there. That's great. So we, That's great. last year we had uh, at least one school who made that their service project, and there's uh, Lawn Manor just notified us that uh, they're going to try and make that their service project. The collection will go from January 26th to February 19th. It's um, wonderful. Yeah, it's it, it's a great program. That's great. Um, and then um, clean energy. You're doing clean uh, energy. Event. Senator Con Senator Bill Cunningham, um, Representative Fran Hurley, and I are hosting a clean energy town hall on February 10th at Moraine Valley Community College in Building M from 6:30 to 8:30. And what this is going to be is a panel of um, people in the uh, environmental field, the energy production field, and um, the the and, and the jobs sector mm -hmm. of this coming together to talk about um, Illinois renewable energy standards which are mm -hmm. some of the most progressive in the nation and we're on a timeline to have more and more of our energy produced through renewables um, and as time goes is that on. a state mandate or it is, is it a state um, and so if anyone has driven along I-57 or I-55 or out I-80, they see the wind farms. Mm -hmm. um, the solar farms are a little bit harder to see because um, they're not but we you know, have small them. landscape, but we have them. And um, not only are, you know, is it, is it taking fossil fuels out and, and, and diversifying what our um, energy mm -hmm. component looks like, these are great jobs, and um, I know your trustee Tim, Tim Desmond, Desmond has yep. made this um, a, a priority of his, and yeah. so we're we're going to uh, make sure that um, the high schools and the career oh, people and Moraine uh, that that they let young people know that this that about about this town hall because it's going to contain a lot of information about jobs and careers in the clean energy field. Um, 
you know, for for anybody who's interested. Yeah. It really is almost the ground floor of this because everyone knows mm -hmm. it's the future of energy in our country. Right. And just like for our generation, getting in on computers or right. you know, right, it was right. a whole industry that started. I really feel in my heart that these clean energy uh, yeah. jobs are going to be the future. And there's and, a lot of innovation in yeah. the industry too, and um, you know what it looks like today, just like computers, what it yeah. looked like. 30 years ago yeah. is not what it looks like today. It's going to go through those same innovations, and I, yeah. I think it'd be a, an exciting field to be in. Yeah, I do too. I so. do too. And a lot of lot of interest, a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, um, very good. And tell me about the triathlon. So, uh, I run an indoor triathlon at Evergreen Park High School um, on a Sunday in March. We don't have the date yet, but okay. it will be forthcoming. But it's a great way to kind of beat the winter blahs. Um, it's a swim, bike, and run. 15 minutes in the pool, 15 minutes on a stationary bike, and 15 minutes on the treadmill. You go at your own pace, and um, you compete based on how much you get done in each mm -hmm. time segment. And so some people are in it to win it. Some people are in it just to, maybe they want to do a, a, an outdoor mm -hmm. triathlon over the summer, and this is a good way for them yeah. to get training. Other people, it's, you know, their friend says, let's give this a try. I think we'll like it. So. The, um, so it's, it's a great community event, but it's also um, the money we raise from it goes to um, help a scholarship fund at Evergreen Park High School for students um, who have learning disabilities but who are going on to, um, to either higher education or um, some post high school um, yeah. training and uh, you know, recognizes them for their efforts and, and tries to help them with those costs. That's awesome. So it's great. It's, it's fun. I actually and do the triathlon. Can all ages do it? You know what we don't? We it's 18 and over, so okay. it is adults. Um, uh, do you mostly do to? You can only have three people at a time because okay. there's three treadmills, three bikes. Sure. Um, so mostly for time constraints. Logistics. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll branch off into kids one day. Who knows? Yeah. So how how can people reach you, and how do you reach people? Do you have a newsletter? How right. So I send out um, an email newsletter about um, eight times a year, nine okay. times a year. How and would people sign up for that? So they can call our office okay. at seven zero eight four two five zero five seven one. And say it one more time, slow. Seven zero eight four two five zero five seven one. Thank you. Or they can email us at. This is kind of long. K Burke at Kelly Burke Rep 36.org. And, and we'll put that up on the screen right. also. So Yeah, and, and so we have a we have this newsletter. So it some some of its events, some of its um, we, we just did one last week where I updated people on three issues that I had three legislative issues that I had worked on um, in the past and kind mm -hmm. of updated on some news on some of mm -hmm. those and then some events. Um, but we also do a job seeker email. and uh, That's great. Yeah, we, we hear about jobs. It's, it's not we can, it, you know, we can't mm -hmm. get you these jobs, but it lets people know about what's available out there. And so we send that out about every two weeks. So and people would sign up the same way for exactly. that? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Wow, that's really great. Yeah, it's it's. I know when we post something on our Facebook page with job leads, it lights up. Oh it's, yeah, absolutely. People love it. Yeah. And then people forward it, you know, to their, uh, right. their students in college or somebody who's right. just gotten out of high school is looking for a job or you know a, a friend who's maybe lost their job and so it 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 it, it gets around. So it's been yeah. real helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then you also have your office right here in downtown so Oaklawn. Right and down I want to thank you for choosing to make the center of town in Oaklawn your office because you have a big district. And, and uh, it, well, it, it is, well, Oaklawn is a wonderful place to be, first yeah. of all, but it is uh, smack dab in the middle, so it's, it's convenient. Yeah. Um, and the location's great. We've got parking right behind the office. Um, and um, it, Very good. It's just been great. And, and one day we hope to win the Chamber of Commerce Christmas decorating <laughs> contest, but we can't touch Thompson and Coons. I know, I know. Bob, I Bob knocks budget. it out of the park. Yeah. When he starts going up on the roof and just, right. uh, it's spectacular. Yeah, we thought we were doing it up with our Christmas tree and garland. but Well, you can try to outdo him in his plantings also because uh, his landscaping. When the tulips start coming oh, up and everything, right. wow. But anyway. 
anyway, so is there anything we didn't talk about that you'd like to tell our residents? Anything that we missed? No, please, please weigh in on. Um, I, I hear from a lot of people um, via email and phone call, especially when you know some of the uh, more prominent issues come up. But I enjoy talking to residents. I have. Um, picked up ideas from legislation, for legislation, from just talking to yeah. um, our, our residents. And so those interactions are really helpful to help me do my job and uh, help me represent you uh, to the best of my ability. And you really rely on resident feedback when you make your decisions. It really, oh yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. We keep a, you know, as opinions come in, we keep a, a tally and I try and call people back, um, you know, when they weigh in on an issue because I want to know what their situation mm -hmm. is or why they feel the way they do and, and get some insight yeah. uh, that way. Yeah, well, I want to thank you for all you do oh. for Oakland and our residents My and pleasure. all that you will do in the next couple years. And thank you and, and congratulations on starting a new term uh, or a new session, whatever the word. I, I think you're <laughs> yeah. right with term. And, and it's uh, my pleasure. I enjoy, um, I enjoy uh, representing Oakland. It's a great town. Yeah. And um, I enjoy working uh, with you yeah. and the village administration and the trustees. So yeah. thanks so much. Yeah, and I call you a rock star because you're always <laughs> out there and, and you do such an effective job. Job, so I thought thank it you. was for my singing ability. But, <laughs> well, but we'll, we'll do that on another <laughs> on another uh, session. But for now, we're going to call it quits on this one. Thank you for watching, and, and Representative Burke, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Mayor Barry. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.